Hello YouTube and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to review Mageia, a Linux distribution formed from Mandriva. Let's get into it. After downloading the 3.9GB DVD ESO and booting it, Magay's installation session begins as many other distributions do. You will be able to choose between some options, nothing fancy here. Installer feels quite strange. First of all, the lack of all colors is awkward for a graphical installer. The installer itself seems to follow a KDE theme, and the installation reminds me Debian's, but it's been a while since the last time I installed Debian anyway. The mouse cursor is some way pretty ugly, and the acceleration was a pain in the butt, really. It took me a while to realize I could disable the mouse integration. One thing that surprised me was the license agreement. I've actually never seen one in a Linux distribution. I gave it a brief read and it seems to be just a bit more than GPL conditions of use. I will put a link to Magia's license in the description if you want to give it a read. doesn't seem to have a default desktop environment, but since the installer looks like KDE, I thought it was some way the suggested one. As you see, you have quite some alternatives anyway. The installation takes quite a while, just get yourself a cup of coffee. If you use Ubuntu, you probably aren't used to this, but the root user is the only one by default having super user permissions. This means that to perform any super user task, you will need to perform it as root. No sudo in the terminal then, just su. Did you really think waiting was over? Well, just take another cup of coffee. After a moderately detailed summary of the current installation, you are asked to update packages. Yes, why not? Again, this will take some time. Coffee time. Is this my third coffee already? Is it over? Really? Whoa! I can't believe it! Whatever, let's reboot.
As the system starts, we are brought to the login screen. Is... is this KDM? It's difficult to find an uglier theme. Well, at least the cars are changed. Looks like Mandrivas, if I remember correctly. But the acceleration is still the same. Why did they put that so high? And why the cursor is now oxygen? Wow, the mouse is a complete mess. Magaya's team made some modifications to the default KDE apparently. There are desktop icons and the panel is plain white with no transparency. The first thing I'm doing is reducing the mouse acceleration. It's just crazy as now. Another modification is this GNOME 2 like menu, but why so few categories? Along with classical settings, there is this Magaya control center, completely different from KDE settings manager, and somewhat nicer really. Since it requires special permissions, we need to insert the root password to continue. For software management, Magaya uses a package manager called URPMI. Nothing bad itself, but the package management is some way awkward. You will see why later. When opening the graphical software management tool, it will update its repositories. Let's say it's not exactly the fastest thing in the world. The software is divided in categories, so we should be able to find it in an easier way. But consider that if a category has subcategories that won't show every package, we have to choose subcategories to show all the effectively available software. And this is the awkwardness I was talking about. For some reason, for each package, we are shown a 64-bit version and a 32-bit version in the same place. Just to freak out computer newbies. For some reason the accessories category is absent and I couldn't locate console or any other terminal emulator, so I just added the default KDE launcher to the panel. Remember that you don't have super user permissions yourself, so don't try to perform URPMI commands with sudo. You have to operate as root using the su command and providing your root password first. The basic commands are pretty easy. To install a package use URPMI package name and to remove or erase a package use urpme package name. For some reason I couldn't install gedit and I found out why later. Just wait. Anyway I managed to install reconc without any problems using command line. While I was installing reconc I downloaded a chrome rpm package 
just to see if installing RPMs works fine. Waiting for Chrome download to complete, I decided to install gedit and see what the problem was. I also installed xarchiver to test in the meanwhile multiple actions. Well, here is the problem. For some unknown reason, I had to mount the isolation media to solve some dependencies. How could I ever figure it out? Chrome's installation worked after all. I went through a warning, but no problems really. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, please press the like button if you did and remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Thanks for watching and see you next time with a new video.